as people are coming back, let's start the uh, next session. So it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Karthik. Karthik is uh, what I would call partner in crime in sort of uh, coordinating, managing, and doing research in healthcare domain in AI and ML. Today he's going to talk about his recent work in identification of cancer driver genes. Uh, without much ado, Karthik, please. Hey, uh, th thanks, Manshu. Always a p uh, pleasure to be here at uh, RBC DSI. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, decoding cancer driver genes today, although a lot of our work uh, in my, my lab currently is focused on microbiome systems biology. So if somebody wants to you know, pick up a thread later on, uh, here's the pointer. So cancer is a disease of the uh, genome, and um, I think you're all familiar with various kinds of mutations, point mutations or structural alterations that happen in these genomes. And if you see, there are lots of genomic studies that, that have presented a lot of insights into ca cancer. And one very important area of research is trying to understand the genomic landscapes of these tumors in terms of drivers and passenger mutations. So what is a driver mutation? So these are mutations that confer a specific growth advantage to cancer cells. And so they outcompete other cells and so on. Passenger mutations are those mutations that don't have any direct effect on the cancer cells uh, uh, per se, on, on the growth of the cells per se. Okay, and if you, you'll see that there are like lots of uh, studies. So here's just a, a quick overview of some of these studies. So some of these are very, very popular uh, tools that people use to study mutations in uh, cancer genomes. But the point is, you, you've seen, I've shown you a lot of studies, right, from single gene studies to computational studies that capture various aspects of uh, cancer genomes. Okay, and this is a very classic uh, uh, paper that talks about the signature of mutational processes in human cancer. Amongst these driver genes, it's also important to view them as either tumor suppressor genes or oncogenes. So this gives you some more insight into the mechanism of how the cancer progresses. Right? So there are these loss of function mutations or gain of function mutations that ultimately decide the progression of cancer in a given patient. So what are the methods for identifying driver genes? They can be broadly split into two classes. One is based on background mutation rate. So to oversimplify it for this audience, it just involves statistical counting, right? So how often do you find a mutation that is driving cancer in, in, the, in the genome? Right? So these are genes that are statistically higher than background mutation rates, and these are captured as pot possible genes that are involved in the progression of cancer. Okay? And the other set of methods are based on what are known as ratiometric approaches, wherein you collect a lot of features that capture various aspects of mutations, ratios of different kinds of mutations, and literally run a machine learning algorithm on top of this to figure out what is the most important mutation or what kind of mutations are going to be tumor suppressor genes and oncogenes and so on. So these are two parallel approaches. So one that is just simply reliant on counting, statistical counting, and the other that is actually uh, reliant on specific features that are extracted. <clears throat> so what are the challenges? There are still a large number of driver genes to be identified. There's a huge heterogeneity across samples. I'll talk about it a little bit more. And for a given cancer, except in certain scenarios, you have very few samples again that are present. So given all of these, you see that today's tools have very high precision but low recall, meaning they do miss out on a lot of driver genes that are very rare. So how do we get around this problem? Okay, I'm going to skip through some of this, and this is again uh, a map of a lot of tools, and if you see this from the picture, even from the end, you can see that there is very, very low recall for many of the methods that are uh, invoked today. So how do we reliably predict driver genes in cancer genomes, so this is the question. And <clears throat> we pulled out coding mutation data from various uh, sources, defined a bunch of features, uh, and we then built a, a train and test model for all of these uh, old features, new features, and so on, to ultimately predict novel tumor suppressed genes and oncogenes. So these are, just to give you a, a hang of what the features look like, so these are uh, features that capture what is the ratio of high functional impact to low functional mu impact mutations, uh, non, something known as nonsense entropy, what is the fraction of uh, damaging to benign mutations, and so on. 
So these are all features that we engineered and they give a better predictive power in terms of identifying genes that are tumor suppressors or oncogenes. And here are some numbers for you. And you can see that the tumor suppressor gene prediction is uh, in general an easier problem than oncogene uh, uh, prediction. And uh, we also carefully uh, protected against overfitting and uh, all, all of those. <clears throat> and here, here are some of the features that we uh, found that were uh, important to discriminate tumor suppressor genes from oncogenes and neutral genes. And this is where one needs to look for biological significance. And here is a list of uh, genes, so, so some of these may ring a bell to the biologists in the audience. And, but the most important aspect is that our method identifies RIVA genes with very low mutation rates. So the, the classic methods rely on uh, you know, higher than background mutation, whereas we are able to identify uh, genes which are mutated in, in very small number of samples as well. Okay, so we identify both pan cancer and tissue specific uh, divergene, uh, driver genes. But the challenge is that tumors are highly heterogeneous. We commonly say that every person's cancer is different and even in the same person, two different cancers will have very different etiologies. So how do we identify cancer genes or uh, driver genes in an individual patient? Right? And for this, we went ahead and um, built this tool called Pivot, which looks at a personalized identification of driver genes and uh, uh, oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes. And once again, to emphasize, there are uh, driver genes that are missed in a lot of samples. So you see lots of samples where you do not have any detected driver genes at all. So how do you identify or how do you pinpoint what are the key causative genes in those samples? And, and there are other uh, uh, tools that used uh, the uh, unsupervised methods based on networks and uh, so on. But we tried to build the first supervised learning method to predict uh, driver genes. And the other important aspect is that many of the tools do not integrate multiomic data. So they rely heavily on genomic data, but today you have transcriptomic data, proteomic data, and other network uh, data, and so on, which has not been fully leveraged by most of the tools. And because we try to, so uh, we try to include all of these as well. And existing tools rank genes as driver genes, but do not typically classify them in terms of functionality as a tumor suppressor or an oncogene. This is again very critical for us to understand the etiology of the disease. So we used different types of labels, data, and uh, features. So we used uh, features from several studies, uh, including uh, so semantic mutation data, RNA expression data, other multiomic data, and so on and various features, uh, I'll not get into all of these things, and also different algorithms like uh, balanced random forest, uh, uh, balanced bagging, and so on. And ultimately, what did we find? We found that both mutation-based, uh, so just mutation-based categorical features are not sufficient to predict driver genes, and you need to include features from the RNA space, so transcriptomic data was very important. And we could also identify that network-based features were highly useful in informing the predictions that we were trying. And ultimately, when we use these multiomic data, we could get as much as 99% accuracy in, for the best models across three different cancer types. And so the point here is that you, one needs to not just stop with genomic data, but you need to look at RNA data, transcriptomic data, and other network data whenever possible. So this is a large table which tells you uh, our performance in terms of various metrics and so on. But I think it suffices to note that there are certain you know, very nice studies that have captured these uh, genes very nicely. And when we use those, uh, the labeling from the Bailey et al. study, we were able to perform, uh, make very good predictions on what would be a driver uh, oncogene or a uh, tumor suppressor gene. And what is very interesting is that these are uh, studies that have, so these are list of top genes that are present in various, um, uh, 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 identified in various cancers. And you see that some of these have already been predicted, but some of these are new predictions from our method. And very likely you can, and we have also identified several literature stu studies and literature which have pointed to the role of these genes in the different cancers. And one, Important aspect of our study is that we are able to identify both rare uh, drivers and also genes with dual roles. For example, JAK1 
is identified as both a tumor suppressor gene and an oncogene in two different cancers. And this is typically not possible with any other method because the uh, method would just predict it as a tumor suppressor gene and oncogene flat. Not because it, it does not take into contextualize in terms of the sample and the mutations present in a given sample and so on. And this is, you know, all the biology underlying it. I'm not going to go into all of it. But the point is that it is known very well that certain genes can, occur, can act as either tumor suppressors or oncogenes. And our method is able to fish this out very carefully based on the features that we have uh, encoded. Okay, so I'm, here's my last slide. So uh, our method pivot predicts driver genes in a patient using multiomic data. And we were able to uh, label the genes as tumor suppressors, oncogenes, or neutral genes. Most importantly, the same gene can be labeled as tumor suppressor in one patient and oncogene in another patient of even the same cancer type. Right? And such predictions are not possible with existing computational tools. So this, our strength stems from the fact that we use multiomic data. And the list of rare predicted genes that we have is very useful uh, because this can help uh, biologists dig deeper into the etiology of these uh, um, tumors and things like that. And NAS is the first uh, supervised ML model to label genes as tumor suppressors and oncogenes. And this reaffirms what biologists have said all along, that um, genes can behave differently based on the environment they are present in and based on the signals that they receive and so on. But you need to be able to have the right kind of data and the right kind of model to tease this out. So with that, I would like to acknowledge a lot of people who are involved in this, uh, particularly Malvika, who um, who ran most of the studies, and uh, Professor uh, Raghu from the Chemical Engineering Department, who, uh, who co-advised Malvika and all of this work. And if you want to read more about you, there are like, uh, so this is the main paper that I was talking about today, but we have a few other papers, and also a lot of uh, our work was featured in the press, so you can go and read a little bit more about some of the methods that we've developed. Thank you. Thank you, Karthik. That was perfect, actually. It's slightly before time. So, any questions for Karthik? Yeah, so, so we rely on labeled uh, data to do this. And uh, so, there are lots of studies which have actually looked into this. And there are uh, databases which have marked these um, genes as driver genes based on s s several studies, right? So, uh, ultimately, it's because they have some biological significance in the progression of cancer. So this has been identified a lot for a lot of genes and that is how these labels have been assigned. No, the question is, um, see, when you refer to these noisy labels problem, like the same gene having different labels uh, with different patients with similar conditions, so that indicates the nature of the gene to be confounding rather than being the driver. I mean, I'm just uh, asking. Oh, no, no, no. So these are, these are driver genes. So they, it's just that, you know, uh, it has a different role in each cancer, right? So in, in one cancer, it may be uh, you know, suppressing the tumor, uh, uh, right? So, I mean, there's a loss of function of the tumor suppression leading to cancer. Or, you know, it has actually had a gain of function wherein it has a new function it was not supposed to have and has now become oncogenic. So, so these are two complementary roles for similar genes. Ultimately, they are both drivers, but the driver gene it itself could be either a tumor suppressor or an oncogene depending upon the functionality. And that, that is what we try to demarcate here. One more question. So you, you said you are using a, a few ensemble methods to solve the uh, imbalance in the class distribution, right? So what was the actual, the V class used behind the scene? So the main class that we use is a random forest. Random forest is fair on top of that. An ensemble of random forests? No, no, we, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we also use balanced bagging and multiple, uh, uh, you know, ways to present the data to the random forest. Thank you. Okay. Any more questions? Yeah. Here. Yeah. Thank you. So, Karthik, uh, do you use this? I want to understand the big picture here. Is it a diagnostic? that you're going to, what would come out of this work? Is it a diagnostic or would it also go towards therapies? Uh, would you personalize therapy at the end of it? Because predictions, I want to understand what that meant. Uh, so just That's curious. That's a very good question. So the idea here is to understand the etiology of the different cancers themselves. 
right? And ultimately, this will help in therapy because uh, if you see a lot of the uh, current therapies are based on targeting driver genes, and so when you have a better understanding of driver genes or your, and their role in cancer progression, I think we'll have a much better handle at potentially personalized treatment and so on. But this is you know at the very very early stages. Right? So, this is in terms of, not in terms of diagnostic, but in terms of trying to understand the etiology of the cancer so that you can better target it or understand the pathways that are involved in the progression. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Uh, so, thank you, Karthik. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Professor Mani presenting the momentum.